Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. At this time, I would like to introduce the commanding officer of Marine Corps Air Station New River, Colonel Timothy M. Salmon. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for being here today and taking your time to support our Marine Corps Air Station New River community. We are honored to have with us today Major General Beidler, Commanding General of TUMEF, Major General Osterman from MARSOC, Brigadier General Shirodi from 2nd MLG, the Mayor from Holly Ridge, Mayor Dingler, and Commissioner from Onslow County, Mr. Buchanan. Thank you for coming today. There are also several colonels here today. Uh, we have Colonel Vara from Marine Aircraft Group 26. Uh, I see Colonel Connor today from SOI. Thank you for coming today. We also have Colonel Escalante, the acting commander for MCI East. And Colonel Roundhorse, if he's here, uh, he is a VMX 22 CO. There's also several sergeant majors in the audience. Thank you for being here today. I'd also like to introduce our guest speakers, Colonel Paul Rock, the, uh, act, the assistant commanding general for 2nd Marine Aircraft Wing, and Colonel Retired Seymour. Colonel Rock, um, as I said, was the assistant wing commander, or is the assistant wing commander for Marine Aircraft, for the second Marine Aircraft wing, excuse me. And um, Colonel Seymour was the commanding officer of Marine Aircraft 26, and he's now the future vertical lift program manager for Bell. Thank you, gentlemen, for adding your experience and insights to this event. I'd like to thank the New River Aviation Memorial Foundation, the National Aviation Museum in Pensacola, the National Museum of the Marine Corps in Quantico for providing this inspiring venue. The memorial itself was raised by the family and friends of the 14 service members who tragically lost their lives on 10 May 1996 when a CH-46 Sea Knight and an H-1 Cobra collided near Courthouse Bay, Marine Corps Base Camp Lejeune. It honors all air crew and service members who have lost their lives while defending our freedom. The statue depicts two Marines one standing in a flight suit to represent the air crew, and one kneeling to represent all others who have made the ultimate sacrifice. We will never forget those who have given their all. The air station's roots date back to 1941, when 2,672 acres of land were purchased for $65,000, in conjunction with a government purchase of Camp Lejeune. Construction began, and in 1943, the first squadron arrived, Marine Bombing Squadron 612, and remained here until its deployment to the Pacific during World War II. In April of 1944, the installation formally separated from Camp Lejeune and was commissioned Marine Corps Air Facility, Peterfield Point, named after the tobacco farmer, Mr. Peter, who originally owned most of this ground. Operations aboard Peterfield Point continued throughout the war, but the installation was converted to caretaker status once the war was over. It remained in that status until 1951, when it reported, reopened as Marine Corps Air Facility Peterfield Point. One year later, it was renamed Marine Corps Air Facility New River. In 1954, Marine Aircraft Group 26 transitioned here from Marine Corps Air Station Cherry Point. Over the next decade, New River developed a small training base into a major tactical marine airfield. This transformation resulted in the Marine Corps Air Station New River with a helicopter designation. The helicopter designation was dropped in 1985, leaving us with its current name, Marine Corps Air Station New River. As the role of Marine Corps Aviation grew, so did it aboard Air Station New River. In 1972, Marine Corps commissioned Marine Aircraft Group 29 here at New River. Additionally, that same year, the airfield was renamed McCutcheon Field after General Keith B. McCutcheon, a three-war Marine aviator and one of the founders of Marine Helicopter Aviation. He was a Marine Aircraft Group Operations Officer in the Pacific in World War II, earning the Silver Star, Legion of Merit with Combat V, and Distinguished Flying Cross. The Commanding Officer of HMX-1, when it was the only helicopter squadron in the Marine Corps. He commanded Marine Helicopter Transport Squadron 161 in Korea, and was the 2nd Marine Amphibious Force Commanding General in Vietnam 
for which he earned his third distinguished service medal. Today, more than 8,000 Marines, sailors, and civilians work aboard Marine Corps Air Station New River to follow in the footsteps of such great men and women. Today, it's a far cry from the humble beginnings 70 years ago. Marine Corps Air Station New River is now the home to four rotary wing squadrons and two more which will be coming from Cherry Point over the next year. Six tilt rotor squadrons, two logistics squadrons, two aviation training squadrons, one marine support squadron, one test and evaluation squadron, one headquarters squadron, as well as a number of smaller detachments. It is also the home of five different types of aircraft. The H-1 Super Cobra, the UH-1 Yankee Huey, the CH-53 Echo Super Stallion, the MV-22 Osprey, and the C-12F Huron. The success of Marine Corps Air Station New River would not have been possible over the years without a support from the local community. As an installation, we take pride in being the active participant in the local community. For many years, we've hosted the JROTC, the Boy Scouts, and the Special Olympics Fall Games. We've hosted the State of the Community Breakfast and Military Affairs Committee, inviting a number of local businessmen, city and county officials, and retirees aboard the air station to foster these relationships and continued support of one another. Today, while we celebrate 70 years as an air station, honor all those who have worked so hard to ensure the success of our squadrons and aircraft, and thank the local community for its support. We are also taking this opportunity to recognize a program and platform that is intrinsically linked to New River, the MV-22 Osprey. For over a decade, Marine Corps Air Station New River was the only installation in the world with operational V-22 aircraft. Every Marine V-22 Osprey pilot has spent time at New River in Jacksonville, learning how to fly the world's premier tilt rotor aircraft. Marines and V-22 Ospreys from this installation have deployed all over the world, providing humanitarian assistance to those in need, transportating personnel and cargo in support of combat operations, conducting ship-to-shore movements and evacuations, and critical resupply missions, as well as tactical recovery of aircraft and personnel. To recognize the significance of the V-22 and its inherent historical ties to the Marine Corps Air Station New River, we have recently added it to our Aviation Memorial grounds and dedicated it here today. At the conclusion of the ceremony, I invite all of you to walk around the memorial, view the aircraft, and read the bronze plaques, which display an in-depth history of each aircraft, as well as the statue itself. I would now like to introduce Colonel Paul Rock. He commanded VMM-263, the Marine Corps' first operational V-22 squadron, and led those Marines and sailors through the MV-22's first combat deployment to Iraq for Operation Iraqi Freedom. He also commanded VMMT-204 and served at Headquarters Marine Corps Aviation as the V-22 lead before assuming his current position. Ladies and gentlemen, Colonel Rock. All right. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I won't uh, go back through the by name list uh, other than to just welcome everyone on this beautiful uh, Eastern North Carolina day. Uh, military, civilian leaders, uh, Marines, sailors, civilians of the Carolina Marine Air Ground Task Force for the Carolina MADTAP as we call it. Uh, I'm here representing the 2nd Marine Aircraft Wing, I'm the Assistant Wing Commander. Uh, the Commanding General, uh, General uh, Major General Bob Hedlund, is uh, currently up doing the Marine Corps business in Norfolk, but he is also a uh, uh, a fan and friend of New River, having uh, served here and commanded here. Uh, he sends his regards. Uh, what I was asked to talk about today is uh, the support that the Marine Corps Air Station New River and the local community have, uh, have made, have done for, uh, have given uh, the 2nd Marine Aircraft Wing. And honestly, I was only asked to talk about the past about a decade or so, and it's tough uh, to limit myself, uh, kind of, because I, I myself have got a lot, a lot of history here at New River. Uh, and it's, uh, it's the place more than anywhere else in the Marine Corps that, uh, that I and my family call home. Uh, it is also, I uh, have to admit, not easy to be speaking at the dedication when someone is putting a plane on a stick that I am 100% sure I have flown before. Uh, so kind of makes you feel a little bit old. Uh, but 
you know, enough whining and uh, I'll just kind of get at it. Uh, the bottom line is that the Marine Corps Air Station New Rivers uh, value to the country, to the Corps, to the 2nd Marine Expeditionary Force and the 2nd Marine Aircraft Wing has never been more evident than over the past 10 years. In a globally deployed and employed Marine Corps, uh, it has been Marine Corps Air Station New River Aviation, uh, Marine Corps Air Station, Marine Corps Air Station New River, and the unfailing support of the local community that have produced a Marine Aviation Combat Element Forces that have uh, gone worldwide, deployed worldwide, and done the nation's bidding. Whether that task be to be forward deployed as a ready response force, or more to perform humanitarian assistance disaster relief, uh, or to outright fight a war. When I, I try to capture um, you know, the scope and the scale of, of what's happened over the past 10 years here uh, at New River, I mean, uh, there's a lot of different metrics. Uh, the one I asked uh, our guys up and opposite the wing uh, to generate was just as an example of the operational tempo, uh, the, the major deployments that have been sourced out of New River. Uh, and there are a lot of them all over the planet. Uh, 17 times in support of East Coast Marine Expeditionary Units, 15 times in support of Operation Iraqi Freedom, 10 times uh, deploying in support of Operation Enduring Freedom, 5 times in support of Joint Task Force Horn of Africa in East Africa, uh, 3 times in the uh, still fairly new Special Purpose Marine Air Ground Task Force Crisis Response Africa uh, over in Moroni and in Italy, and then twice even all the way over on the other side of the planet in Westpac in Okinawa, Japan as part of the Unit Deployment Program and the 31st Marine Expeditionary Unit Support. Uh, I mean, that's a pretty quick listing and, and having done that, it's almost too easy. It makes it sound too easy. for That's over 50 different uh, major deployments. Uh, and, a, and it's worth mentioning, I think, that a big chunk of the Corps' history and, uh, and even uh, the nation's history has been written during those deployments. And just a few examples of them. I mean, of course you've got Operation Iraqi Freedom and Enduring Freedom. I mean, uh, that has been a major focus for us over the past decade plus. And, uh, and all the highs and lows in Iraq and Afghanistan, uh, whether it's during the surge or during just the uh, the normal rotational deployments of a protracted of two protracted counterinsurgency fights, it has been Marine Corps Air Station New River uh, based aviation assets that have given Marine Coalition and Joint forces the edge there, uh, whether that has been aviation, the speed and the range, the legs, provide persistent presence across the enormity of western Iraq and the Al Anbar province, or connecting, linking and supporting uh, the network of forward operating bases and outposts across, across regional command southwest, and keeping marines off roads infested with uh, improvised explosive devices. New River Base units help make this success possible. But while OIF and OEF has certainly dominated uh, much of the past decade, it hasn't been the only game in town. Uh, as, uh, just in the past couple years, past few years, in 2010, the 22nd and the 24th Marine Expeditionary Units, uh, again with aviation out of New River, uh, supported humanitarian uh, assistance disaster relief operations after the uh, January 2010 earthquake in Haiti that devastated that, uh, that already uh, troubled country. Uh, bringing disaster assessment and relief teams uh, onto the island and delivering over a million and a half pounds of relief supplies to a desperate population, uh, I mean, couldn't have been done uh, without the support of those aviation assets coming from uh, right out here. And it's also worth noting, since we're here in, in part to dedicate uh, the V-22, that that was the first use of the V-22 in a humanitarian assistance disaster relief operation. Uh, moving a little bit later in the next year, uh, during the time when the U.S. was leading coalition, a coalition enforcing U.N. sanctions against Libya, Operation Odyssey Dawn, a Marine Corps Air Station New River assets as part of the 26th Marine Expeditionary Unit uh, executed a very rapid, shockingly rapid, tactical recovery of an Air, U.S. Air Force F-15E Strike Eagle pilot whose airplane went down in Libya. I mean, just wouldn't have been possible with any other force on the planet. I mentioned also, just taking you all, all the way to the other side of the planet, is, uh, uh, is support for the Unit Deployment Program at 31st, uh, 31st Mew. Uh, the Unit Deployment Program had been tough to, had been just outright tough to do during uh, the course of fighting two wars. But in conjunction with the Marine Corps' major role in the pivot to the Pacific, 
uh, the uh, second marine aircraft wing light attack squadrons were sent out to Okinawa, Japan as part of the unit deployment program, uh, giving credibility to the U.S. presence there and uh, enhancing engagement with allies and partners. Back across, uh, back home, closer, uh, closer to home at least, up the East Coast, in uh, October 2012, New River Base units assisted in the humanitarian assistance disaster relief operations uh, for Hurricane Sandy right there in New York and New Jersey. And then most recently in July of 2014, uh, we had uh, Marine, or excuse me, uh, Special Purpose Marine Air Ground Task Force Crisis Response Africa Forces, again with Marine uh, Aviation sourced out of New River, participated in Operation Oakland Lotus and the uh, uh, military assisted evacuation of embassy personnel uh, under duress uh, from Tripoli, Libya. And while all that's going on from a uh, operational all over the planet uh, sort of tour, uh, again, it's worth reinforcing that the uh, 2nd Marine Aircraft Wing also has two of the Corps' fleet replacement squadrons uh, right here on the base. And if you're going to fly or maintain uh, a CH-53 Echo Super Stallion or MD-22 uh, B Osprey, uh, you're coming through your road will uh, take you through New River. So you can see that 2nd Ma, hopefully you can see that 2nd Ma, MAG-26, and MAG-29 have been and remain very busy. Uh, we've had just uh, this past year over 20,000 flight hours in contingency and then also training and support uh, operations. And I'll just close by saying that it's, uh, it's a genuine honor and a pleasure uh, to have the opportunity to talk uh, about a place that, again, I, I consider to be my Marine Corps home. Uh, a lot has happened since Lieutenant Rock uh, drove aboard New River in 1990 and learned to fly the, uh, the mighty battle frog. Uh, back at a time when HMH 362, the Ugly Angels, were flying 53 Deltas here, and BMO 1 was taking the mighty OB 10 Bronco on its last fight in the Forest Colors uh, to Desert Storm. And uh, aviation legend uh, Fred McCorkle, Lieutenant General, uh, USMC retired, was then Colonel McCorkle, the commanding officer of MAG 29. There's a lot of history here. And uh, I don't want to steal anything from uh, Mongo, who's going to talk more about the V-22, but this is also the place uh, worth reinforcing, uh, where the ungainly aircraft behind us, ungainly odd-looking but brilliantly capable, uh, first found its operational wings in the hands of Marines. So as we dedicate uh, this aircraft and, uh, and commemorate this 70th anniversary, thank you all for coming. Uh, God bless American Air Corps and Semper Fi. I'm supposed to introduce Mondo. Chris Seymour, my good friend, my TBS platoon mate. Thanks. Well, thank you, Rock. Uh, Paul, uh, I'm ecstatic to be here. Absolutely humbled when uh, Tim called uh, a couple weeks ago and said, hey, Mongo, what are you doing on the 29th? you think you can come do this uh, ceremony at New River? And I said, let me think about it. Yes. Um, and unwittingly, he just warned me before uh, we started. He goes, five minutes, Mongo, fast and funny, shut up and sit down. But when he, uh, when, when he called me day before yesterday, he said, uh, he said, okay, here's, here's how it's going to go down, Mongo. I'm going to get up. I'm going to say some stuff about the air station and, and, the, and, uh, and the anniversary. And Paul's going to get up. He's going to talk about operations. And, and I want you to talk about the industry side of things. And uh, I said, uh, okay, I'll, whatever you want, man. I'm just happy to be there. And... Um, so I dwelled on that for a little while, and I thought to myself, it's like, um, I can't talk about the industry side of things. I've only been in the industry for a year. I'm still a Marine at heart, and uh, I spent a large part of my career here at New River as well. And uh, when, I, when I greeted Paul earlier, he asked, uh, so how's it going? I said, it's great, man. I'm in eastern Carolina. It's a beautiful day. And it's just good for my soul to be here. So I thank you. I'm humbled for the opportunity to be here at Fish. Thanks for inviting me. I can talk about V-22 and tilt rotor operations all day long. If I if I get really bad, just shoot me with one of those poison darts, and nobody will see, and I'll fall over, and uh, and you can drag me off later. So trying to be loyal and uh, and and true to Fish's request. What's the industry? What's the industry take on this? So a whopping one year in industry, working on future vertical lift for Bell Helicopter. I'll tell you this, okay, after 
after fighting the fight for many years with Paul and a lot of other folks and, and Voodoo and some, some guys here in the audience but to get B-20 operational and normalized, I always had a little bit of a disdain for industry, okay? And uh, I, get, I think that's just a normal relationship between Marines trying to bring new technology on board and the industry guys that you know are, are, uh, are making money doing it. And I'll tell you, after a short year uh, at Bell Helicopter, I couldn't have a, a more different attitude now. I can tell you, and, and we all learn this in our lives as we grow older about people, nobody gets up in the morning to do someone else harm intentionally unless they're evildoers, right? Everybody who's in the Corps or serving their country or working in industry gets up with the intention to do something better. And that's exactly the way it is in industry. You don't see it sometimes when you're staring across a, an oak table uh, negotiating you know, an upgrade or a contract or something like that. But on this side of the curtain now, I can tell you that people are working exceptionally hard. And it's not because they make a lot of money, it's because they want to make a difference. Bell Helicopter, and I have to talk, you know, Bell, it's a Bell Boeing product behind us here, the B-22. But Bell Helicopter's Logan, if you will, slogan for Bell Helicopter right now under the leadership of John Garrison is we're on a mission. Look, we're on a mission. Our mission is not to make money. Money is a good thing, but capitalism is a great thing. It's freedom. Got all that, right? But we're on a mission to save people's lives. And the thing that, that vertical lift platforms were brought into existence to do was to save people's lives. To get people off of those roads infested with IEDs that Paul talked about. Get people from point A to point B as rapidly as possible. Put them on the ground where they need to do their action, whether it's humanitarian assistance, disaster relief, or you know, bringing death and destruction to the target area. And those people that do that job, they don't do it because it's cool or it's fun. They do it because they really care. And uh, one of the other quotes that I'll steal from our president, John Garrison, he says this all the time. He goes, every time a rotorcraft with Bell Helicopter logo on the side of it spins up to take off, it's going to help somebody. And that's meaningful. That's meaningful. They're not making an app on your iPhone that you can make a reservation on, you know, on, on, on some travel app or, or check your Facebook account. That's fun stuff, but it's meaningful in that we're, we're, we're working on something that's going to help people, it's going to save people's lives, whether it's a medevac mission, whether it's a combat mission to protect and, and, and serve liberty around the world where it needs to be served. That's what vertical lift platforms do, and that attitude is infused throughout the the small part of industry that I live in for all of one year. If it wasn't, I wouldn't be there, I tell you. I've been a Marine a lot longer than I've been anything else. And that's why I kind of laughed when you said I want you to give the industry perspective, Mongo, because I don't really know what that is yet. I'm giving you, you know, my first year blush. Maybe I'm still on a honeymoon. Get back with me in a couple of years. Maybe it'll change. I doubt it. I think we're, we're, uh, we're right where we need to be on the industry side. It's not the romance of the, the you know the Cold War buildup where people are making a lot of money off of uh, government contracts. That's not it at all, folks. People come to work with a with a true patriotic sense of doing something bigger than themselves, and that's what that's the industry take on this. And I can tie that back to the V22 for hours about the problems that we face bringing that technology into existence and doing all the phenomenal things that it's doing right now all over the world. Um, it wasn't easy, as you probably all know. But if you look around OSD and other services, I'm not poking at the other services, but name another service that's pulled that off in the last decade, or the last two decades. On March 19, 1989, the first V-22 took off in Dover, Delaware, 25 years ago. It took 25 years to get where we are today. In World War II, the P-51 Mustang went from a drawing on a a hand drawing on a drawing board to flying in 75 days. It was deployed by the thousands into combat a few years later. Why is that? Because it's hard. This technology is hard. But it's fantastic. It's absolutely fantastic. And it does, it does God's bidding every day that it takes off. If it's not saving somebody's life directly, it's training somebody who will save somebody's life one day. 
and that's meaningful, and that's the industry side of things, and uh, that's my best shot fish. That's all I can do, brother. It's a pleasure to be here with all of you today. It is good for Mongo Soul to be back among Marines and breathing the uh, Eastern Carolina air. I hope all of you have a fantastic day and, uh, and week. God bless all of you. Semper Fidelis. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the retiring of the colors. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes today's ceremony. At this time, Marine Operational Test and Evaluation Squadron, VMX-22, will conduct a flyover of the Memorial Gardens. Please feel free to move out from under the tent to get a better view. Upon conclusion, the commanding officer invites you to a reception at the officer club. Thank you for attending.